Hi, I'm Beth and I work with the Gail Borden Library in the Customer Relations Department. I'm here to show you another video on nail art techniques. This one is going to be gradients and ombres. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to be a technique that requires a little bit more practice, but I know you can do it. I believe in you. So let me show you how. Okay. I'm going to go over what we need to make the gradients and the ombres. The first thing I'm going to go over right now is the difference between a gradient and an ombre. A gradient uh, is shifting from one color to another, so like uh, a blue to a red, whereas an ombre is shifting from, a, the, from shades, from one shade of a color to another shade like a light purple to a darker purple. Now, honestly, I get those two words mixed up all the time. And in the nail art community, they're kind of interchangeable. So I'm going to use the word gradient the entire time I'm filming, even if I do end up going from one shade to another. And technically that's an ombre, but I can never keep the two organized in my own head. So so the things that you're going to need, obviously, is the nail polish. Um, you're going to need a, a base coat. Uh, base coats will protect your natural nail from staining, particularly if you like to use darker colors. Reds in particular um, are usually pretty, uh, are usually stained very easily. So uh, a base coat will help protect your natural nail from getting stained. Um, after that, you've got uh, top coats. Top coats will protect your art and make it last longer. And it also makes it give it a nice shine. Unless you get a matte top coat, that'll give it a nice, like, satiny finish. I prefer glossy, so all my top coats are pretty much very shiny. Um, that's the nail polish. Uh, the unique thing about gradients is they use sponges. Now, I'll show you how we're going to do this, but the sponges that I typically use are these cosmetic wedges. Um, they're really cheap, you know, a buck a bag, you know, about 32 in a bag. So, I mean, this, this will last you a really long time. They're fairly inexpensive. You think, oh, I use the sponge, throw it away, time to use a new one. No, 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 let me show you a trick. A pair of scissors, brand new sponge. I mean, you can throw this part away, but now you can get, you know, five, six, seven uses out of one of these. If you don't have one of those lying around, like I said, I'm trying to uh, show you nail art that you can do with what you have lying around. Kitchen sponges will work just as well. Um, because the holes in a kitchen sponge are a little bit bigger, it's going to take you a little bit more effort to get a smooth transition from one color to another, but you can do it. And I have in the past done it with, with, with kitchen sponges. Now this is a little bit of a messier technique. So I'm going to show you how to, um, mitigate some of that messiness. I've got some scotch tape here. What we're going to do is before we get into um, sponging the nail polish onto our nails, we're going to tape up the nails just a little bit. One piece that goes around the top, down, and along the bottom like that. And then another piece right across the bottom. And then I give this little flap so it's easy to pull off again. Now I've got a little bit of tape on my nails so when I go to sponging paint on it, it doesn't get all over my skin. Now it'll get a little bit on my skin in the corners here. I got little tiny triangles where the tape doesn't quite reach, but this will make doing messy nail art so much more enjoyable because it's so much easier to clean up. Speaking of cleanup, let me take this off because we're not ready to paint quite yet. See, and it comes off really easy. Speaking of cleanup, nail polish remover. I prefer 100% acetone. Um, 
You can use regular nail polish, which is totally fine. Acetone removes things faster, removes nail polish faster and cleaner, easier, but it is very drying to your nail and your skin. So after using acetone, you're gonna want to apply um, hand lotion almost immediately just to rehydrate your skin and nails. Um, the longer your nails go dehydrated, the faster they'll chip. They'll chip and break. So um, acetone, while it's fantastic for cleanup, does have its drawbacks, so have hand lotion on hand. Haha, <laughs> hand lotion on hand, no pun intended. Um, and for getting into those little corners, Q-tips. Dip a little Q-tip into some acetone and get right into the corners that will be um, be messy. Um, I've got some specialty Q-tips here, made spe specifically for manicures. They're kind of pointy on one end, flat on the other for doing large amounts of removal but pointy for doing very precision stuff. Um, they're kind of nice. Uh, not necessary. Not something that you need to have on hand. Another thing that I've started using is, uh, this here is a, uh, an eyeshadow brush or an eyeliner brush. It's an angle. Well, it was angled. It's been dipped in acetone so many times that it's starting to fray. So dip that into acetone and then you're able to get the nail polish right out of the corners. I'll show you when it comes time to clean up. But this here, uh, you can use it multiple times, whereas a Q-tip is pretty much uh, uh, disposable. Another thing that's pretty cool to have on hand, I've got some library books here. All about different types of nail art designs. We've got nails, nails, nails. We've got the nail art source book and we've got cool nail art. I'm gonna show you a quick picture of just what we're gonna be doing today. Those are gradients, or opera, sorry. <laughs> um, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Right down to, they're even using the cosmetic sponges just like I talked about, and I'll show you how to do that. But check out your local library for all kinds of nail art ideas. I'm going to go ahead and get some base colors done so you guys don't have to sit here and again watch paint dry. Um, all right, I went ahead and I put a base color down on my nails and I did the display one so you can see what we're going to be doing today. Um, when doing the nails, I like to do, if I'm going to do say two colors, what were these two colors? It was these two here. No, it was these ones. Okay. If I'm going to do a manicure of these two colors, it's a very pale purple and then kind of a nice medium grapey purple. Um, I like to paint my nail all over with the lighter color. So that's what I've done here. This one here is the lighter color. It's a very pale purple. It looks almost white on here. Um, and then I will sponge on the darker color. Let's tape up our nails so that we don't make a massive mess. Okay, so I've got one going down under and one that goes over the top. Okay. I'm going to start off. I'm putting just a line of polish on the sponge like that. Very simple. Okay. It'll take a moment for it to soak into the sponge a little bit. And I'm going to go um, right at the tip of the nail and work my way up so that as it uses the polish on the nail, it fades a little bit so I don't get a hard straight line. And from here on out, I'm going to put two lines of polish on the this will help blend the color from one to the next. So here's the light purple. And do a little bit more dark purple. Now we're putting, by sponging it on, we're putting thin coats on at a time and slowly building up 
the transition from one color to the next. Actually, there we go. So it's going to take a couple times. See, it doesn't look like much difference yet. And also, I would sponge all my nails on one hand, let it dry, and then go back to the beginning and sponge again. Right now here, I'm doing one nail at a time, so it's not having much time in between to dry. Getting better. Maybe one or two more coats and we'll be there. There we go. That's starting to make a nice transition from one color to the next. All right, I'm liking that. Now it looks a little gritty, but once I put a top coat on there, it'll smooth almost instantly. Polish that was on the tape. That is not on my skin, but there is a little bit around the cuticle. It'll clean right up. But now you can see the acetone where it touched my skin, how my skin's getting really white and flaky. That's because it's drying out. And I'm gonna do a top coat smoothed out a lot better. Put a little bit of lotion where I put that acetone. This here is a, a nail oil pen. It um, helps rehydrate your nails and your cuticles. You don't need one hand lotion will do, but I've got it sitting here, so might as well use it. Okay, so that is your basic uh, ombre gradient. That's the basic technique of what we're going to be doing. Okay. Um, the next one, we're going to do three colors. And not only three colors, we're going to attempt to do it on a diagonal. All right. This one here, I did red, white, and blue. Uh, since white was the lightest color that I, I used in this manicure, since white was the lightest one, I painted my whole nail white. Because the darker colors will go over a lighter color better than a lighter color will go over a darker one. We're taped up. Ready for the next one. We're going to go on a diagonal this time. I'm starting with white on the sponge. I don't want red to get in my bottle of white. I don't want to contaminate my colors. Mix my colors on the brush. I want them to mix on the sponge. I don't want to mix them on the brush. Okay. And I'm going to be very careful to keep this, keep the sponge straight up and down because I painted the diagonals on the sponge. So there's no need for me to twist the sponge around. Pretty pale. It's going to take a couple tries. It's getting a little sticky. I don't want it to if it gets too sticky, the polish as it dries on the sponge gets sticky. If it gets too sticky, when you sponge it on, instead of applying color, it peels the color off that you've already got on your nail. So that's why I'm constantly applying to the sponge to keep it wet. That actually looks pretty good. Now, if you ever find yourself doing a gradient and the colors just aren't blending together the way you like, or you just can't get that grittiness out, or something about it just bothers you. I have a trick for that. And that trick, I mean, that, that's a pretty decent gradient, but you can still see that there's a little bit of grittiness to it. When I top coat it, most of that goes away, but here's a trick for you. Glitter. A nice, clear, gentle glitter hides a lot of nail polish sins. And now you don't even really see the grittiness anymore because you just see glitter. Or the grittiness, the, the, the speckly, blends into the glitter. Two down. The next one. The next one's a little tricky because it uses black polish. Black, just by its nature, is very pigmented. So getting it to blend into another color is very tricky. Because again, you choose the lightest color 
of the two that you're going to do a gradient with. I painted the nail red because between red and black, red is the lighter color. Tape up the nail. Okay, we're ready to go. Now black, you want to be very gentle with. I'm just going to put a teeny tiny little bit on a corner just to get started, just a little bit. And we're just going to tap the very free edge. Come on, focus, there we go. We're just going to do the free edge just a little bit. We want to be very gentle with black because it will go everywhere. Okay, looks like we got a nice basis going there. Now, we're going to do what we've done the rest of the time. A line of black. But nice, I like to th a thin line because like I said, a very little black goes a long way. And then the red. Just so that it blends better. Okay. Here we go. And we're going to gently move up the nail a little bit so that the black fades up into the red. See? It's a little trickier, but you can do it. And since these are two very pigmented colors, it's not going to take very many coats at all. To finish this one. And just slowly work your way up. See? Mostly along the sides. It's always where I tend to slop polish is on the sides. A coat of top coat should make it smooth and nice. Alright. Let's move to the next one. Now, I've been saying start with the lightest color and paint your nail that color first. But I happen to know for a fact that the next two polishes I use, the lightest one would be the red. I'm going to use this red and blue. But um, I know that they don't mix well. Like, where they meet is okay, but if I tried to sponge uh, the blue over the red, it's going to make a muddy purple. So um, I painted my nail white instead. So I painted the nail white because I know that painting it red and then sponging the blue over it was not going to be an attractive color. So that's the one I'm doing next. It's going to be a little tropical sunset. Okay, nails taped up. Line of blue. Now these two colors are kind of watery. So unlike the red and black that I did just before that only needed like two coats. This might take a few more. So it's just a good idea to know your polish, know what it's going to require. I mean it's pretty, but it's pale. So it's going to take a couple coats. There we go. That should be just about good enough. I mean, I suppose we could do another coat or two, but it's not going to get m too much better than that. And where the blue meets the red, you can see that line of purple. It's not terrible, but if I had painted my nail the entire red, there would be no blue at all. It would just be purple. The blue would not be able to show up over the red. And if you got a small brush, that would work great. I have a dotting tool here, which will work also. So let's see, that's probably be the best angle. I'm going to do a line of black on the base, and that's my island where the tree is setting. Bring the trunk up and curve a little bit. Try not to dig too much into your polish, but if you do, you can always cover it up with leaves. A 
for this. I'm gonna use my brush. I like my brush because it can really get into the corners close. You do have to be careful though because it sometimes, if you've got a lot of acetone on the brush, it'll just flood and go everywhere. Now when you're going over a design, you kind of want to have a lot of top coat on your brush and just load it over the top. Particularly if you think your design might still be wet because, um, yeah, it didn't happen this time. Good. Um, you can get streaks. If the black is still wet when you're putting the top coat on, it'll streak. Uh, this one here might have a couple, a little bit of streaking, not much. So yeah, just be careful if, when you're going over a black design, the black might run. Okay, and for the last nail, we're going to be doing the rainbow gradient. Now this one here is the trickiest because the sheer number of colors you're trying to fit on one nail. Um, if you've got nice long nails, it shouldn't be that much trouble. The shorter your nails are, the thinner your stripes are gonna need to be. So I've already, I painted my nail white because the lightest color would be yellow, but some of these colors don't mix well together. So we're just gonna straight off and start off with just a flat white. That way all the colors pop nicely. Um, I've already got it taped up. The polishes are all uncapped and my sponge is ready to go. Let's get this last nail done. Like I said, you're gonna wanna make as thin of stripes as you can manage. I have skipped orange because I'm hoping that the red and yellow mixing is going to make a nice orange and I simply don't have enough space to get all the colors on. Now you could theoretically skip green too, but this yellow and blue mixed together don't make as pretty of a green. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a green polish. But theoretically, if you wanted to, you could just do the three primary colors and hope that where they bleed together, you get your secondary colors. But I find adding green and purple just complements the rainbow a little bit better. And your blue and red won't bleed together because they're on opposite ends. So you gotta include purple. Okay. Now again, I'm using colors that are a little thin, a little watery. It's just gonna take me a couple tries, but look at that, that's already looking pretty good. Let's load up the sponge again. Not bad, not bad. We are getting a little bit of white on the side. I'm probably gonna do it one more. Now I'm not going in the exact same place each time. I'm moving the sponge up a little bit and down a little bit when I sponge. And that's to fuzz the edges a little bit so that I'm not getting straight harsh lines like the red ends here, the yellow ends here. But just feathering it up and down just a little bit you bleed the lines together, you blend them ever so gently, and that gives you your nice smooth gradient. One more time. Make sure we get that edge. Bump the camera, sorry about that guys. There we go. That looks Pretty spectacular, probably better than my demo one turned out. What is a rainbow without glitter? I mean, even though I'm happy with the way it blended, I still like glitter. So a coat of glitter, because why not? I 
and take some final shots. Also at the end of this video, I'm going to include some other pictures of gradients that I've done in the past, just so you get an idea for what an entire manicure looks like. It looks a little funny, every single nail being different. I'm going to show you what some finished, some completely finished looks, some completely finished manicures look like. All right, let me get that cleaned up and I'll show you what they look like. All right, there we go, all done. We started off with your basic gradient, moving from one shade to the other, technically an ombre, but I always call it a gradient. That's just my own personal feeling. So moving from one shade of color to another. Then we did it with three colors and to make it a little bit more difficult, we put it on a diagonal. It's going for a little bit of American red, white, and blue, but it came off a little Pepsi can. Still, there was a little bit of roughness to it, so we hid our flaws with some glitter. Very simple and easy to do. The next we tackled black. Black being a very highly pigmented polish, we're able to very gently blend it into another, co another color. Then we did a, a little bit of artwork over the top of it. We made a sunset with a palm tree. It's a little bit of a, a paradise there. Finally finishing it off with, how many colors did we end up using? Five colors, five colors to make a rainbow gradient. Starting from red, moving to yellow, green, blue, and at the very tip there, purple. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you had some fun doing some pretty nifty nail art, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.